What's up, everyone? It's the Michael. I'm here in 1997. Here to do a review of, guess what? Godzilla. I actually saw it um, yesterday. Well, today is Monday, so I saw it on Sunday. And let me just say right now, I have actually not seen the 1954 original. It's been 60 years since the first Godzilla, and I still haven't seen it. Surprise. And um, I really went into this film. I had a little bit of a little bit mixed expectations. Some of it was good. I was a little worried about it, like trying to reboot or trying to remake a classic 1954 film, which was a Japanese cult classic. And a lot of people still love the original film. So in this film, I had a lot of like worries that it would might not live up to its expectations. But I went in. I saw it. I actually saw it in actually 3D. And I let me just say right now, Godzilla is not a disaster film. It's actually a really good, really well done film that is really respecting really the atmosphere, the tone, and the folk, not folk, but lore of Godzilla itself. It really does center on that. And a lot of people tell me that it really does, has a lot of great tie-ins with the original. But, and that's what I really love, that this film, in my, my opinion, is a really great reboot, in my opinion. It's really well done, and it's not just as like copy and paste as other reboots have been in the past. So... Let's get into it right away. What's the story? Well, I can't really say too much of the story because the story centers around a lot of ideas, including Godzilla, and it's really hard to talk about it because if I talk about it too much, I might spoil the film for you, and I really don't want to spoil this film for you because I really do think you should check this film out. So, um, it talks about, it really starts off in the year 1999, and we're talking like timeline, and, it starts, and that's where the film really begins. And then it talks later on into the year 2014, and it really talks about like these like the scientists trying to figure out what are these like earthquakes and like tumor like not tumors but like tsunamis and all that stuff that's happening the 15 between these 15 years, and what happens is Godzilla shows up and there's chaos and like I can't that's not gonna really explain the story. Because if I go too in depth into it, I'll ruin the film for you, and I really don't think I should, because if I will, it will ruin the film for you. So, I really think that to get the full meaning of the story, check out the film itself. But I'll do the best I can to review this film, because it really took me a while to actually think on how to actually review it. It's really hard to really review something like this, where the story is, in, is connected to everything. So, instead of going too deep into the story, Let's go into actually the cast here. So we have Brian Cranston, and may I just say I haven't actually watched Breaking Bad. I know that's kind of odd, but I haven't been watching haven't watched Breaking Bad at all. So, so I really have, I did see uh, Brian Cranston's other films like Argo, with a supporting character in, and I really say that Brian Cranston is a great actor overall. He did a really good job in what he was given with. Um, I can't say too much about his like about what, how his character is developed to the film, but. His lines of dialogue and his performance really is overall just outstanding. You really do feel like he has emotion and he really does put all his effort into it. Just kind of like with every other film he's in. Even if it's Total Recall, he still does a good job with that film. I mean, the, yes, the film itself, Total Recall, wasn't really that good. But his performance really did kind of like did a good job for me. He really won me over. And in this film, he really won me over. He actually is the anchor of the film, in my opinion, Brian Cranston. As he kind of like really sets the tone for this film to really set off, and I really did think that this without got uh, Brian Cranston in the film, this film wouldn't really work as well in my opinion. So um, that's how I see it, really. Um, I, uh, there's other ca actors like Ken Watanabe. If you have, not know who Ken Watanabe is, I recommend you go see films like The Last Samurai, Inception, or Batman Begins. He's actually, in my opinion, I really did like uh, his performance as well. He's kind of he kind of has some honor into him, in my opinion, and I felt like he's kind of a throwback to the 1954 original, in my opinion, because he's a because he's like the only real Japanese actor in this film. Because if he wasn't in it, it would just all be all-American or a Caucasian film, if that's what you would say. But I'm just going to stick with all-American here. Um, but the thing I like about his performance is, is that everyone sees Godzilla as just this man, this creature who just causes havoc. And he doesn't see him as that. He sees him as a balance of nature. And I just love his dialogue as well, just as much as Brian Cranston's. 
Cam Watanabe's uh, dialogue was really well done, and I really did think that when he talked and when he said his dialogue, it really felt like he put his own emotion into that, and I really thought that was really well done, in my opinion. Um, so, in other ways, uh, Brian Cranston and Cam Watanabe did a great job of acting here. And now let's go into some other characters, who are Aaron Taylor Johnson, who really uh, takes up most of the film, really. Um, I love his performance in Kick-Ass, like, and, and Kick-Ass 2, even though Kick-Ass 2 wasn't really that amazing. It didn't really kick that much ass, really. Um, his performance here is really overall just good. He's not amazing or stand like Brian Cranston or Ken, but he does do a good job because he's not... They tr he's a soldier in the film. I'm not spying too much, but in the trailer, you see he's a soldier, and he's with the military, and, and he has to do these, like, missions while Godzilla's out. Uh, causing havoc in the trailers, like they make him like the big bad Godzilla. Um, so his character, I thought he wasn't really bland. Like some actors, are, like some reviewers are saying, it's bland. His performance is bland or just horrible. <laughs> I just think that his performance overall is just well done. I mean, he's not because if he was like one of those characters that I will fight Godzilla, I will destroy him. It wouldn't really work with the tone of the film, in my opinion, and the atmosphere. It would actually betray the film, no because from any other type of remake that this film has done in the past. Let's be honest, there's been a lot of Godzilla's film in the past that has not worked. And I felt like this one really did a good job. But back to Aaron's performance, he does a really good job as well. I mean, he plays a father who has a new kid, and he has a wife, and he's basically trying to do whatever he can to basically help them out. And he's in the military. And then we have Elizabeth Olsen. Now, I really thought her performance in this was really well done as well. And I really do, um, I can't really say too much, but she also plays the mo she also plays a mother. And, um, it really, I really thought her performance, I thought her performance was going to be actually average, to be honest. But I, I'm surprised at what she did. She did a really good job, in my opinion, in my overall opinion, as in, her, in just the way she did, in the dialogue they gave her. And the writer, Max Borstein, I believe his name is, he did a good job with the dialogue. None of it was actually flat. None of it was like, oh, I know what he was going to say, or predictable. And the story itself is actually really, uh, really surprisingly well done. It doesn't really, um, how can I say, it's not like, oh, lackluster depth. The story actually has a lot of depth to it, believe it or not, for a Godzilla film. And it really does a good job. And may I just say, I must give props to the director, Gareth Edwards, um, this is not, this is like his second film, second or third film, really. Uh, if you really want to see how he really started on his science fiction and his visual effects, as he did here, I recommend you go check out his first film, I believe it's called Monsters. Um, it's a really good film, I actually saw it on my, online. It was really well done, in my opinion. It was really actually a unique film, he wrote and directed that. He directed this film, but no writing. And I felt like his, like, type of vision of a darker type of tone to it, he really did do a good job with that overall. And I really do love it overall. Um, the visual effects, of course, has to be perfect because a Godzilla is in the film, and there's tons of moments when things are falling, there's like crashing, and helicopters go down, and it hits airplanes, and airplanes blow up. Um, it has to look good, otherwise, the entire film, the entire film would be, let's be honest, collapse. It would collapse around Godzilla. And Godzilla himself, visually effectively speaking, he actually has a lot of details. He kind of looks like a mix of like a Komodo dragon and the original Godzilla, in my opinion. I actually saw some pictures of the original Godzilla as a footage. And um, after seeing the original footage and and this one, he kind of does look like a little bit like his original self. And I kind of like that. Um, so, it doesn't feel jarring. So, the old, the old nostalgic fanboys who love the original Godzilla they actually get something out of this film. So visually speaking, it's really uh, great. So when you, it's kind of like seeing, like an um like a really old film and seeing it updated for the new. So it's kind of like you go watch the original and then you put it next to this film, you can see the improvements from visual effecting. Because in my opinion, when Godzilla showed up on screen, I did not say, "Oh my god, he looked horrible." I thought, "Oh my god, he looked detailed. He had a lot of great detail when he runs, like when he steps on like a." Uh, the ground, he sees like his big feet crashing everywhere, and he, like they show like the details of him. The camera shows up and it shows his body, and like they show his face and his like parts. And of course, they had to get one thing right with the Godzilla. I thought was the iconic roar, and the roar in this film was really just well done. It really um, 
it's really hard to really do the war because I don't know how to do that to war and I never do it. But I'm not saying I will, but um the war is really iconic and if you screwed up the war, you would screw up the entire film, in my opinion. So they did a good job with the war, because that's like a main point of Godzilla. He's gonna be doing that the entire time of the film when he shows up. Um Visually speaking, it's really well done, like I said before. No parts of the CGI look actually bad or crappy at all. And the main point, and the most important part of the film, has to be Godzilla itself. I mean, he's not the main character. Yes, it's called Godzilla, but he's more, not main character, but he's more of a supporting main character, in other ways. Like, yeah, he's kind of important, but at the same time, he's not too important. It's not like the film is like, oh, it opens up Godzilla, he, he goes through the screen, and he eats everyone, and destroys half the planet. It's not like that. They really do use him at the right time, and I thought that was smart. How they don't overuse him. I like, um, they show him at certain times. They don't show it too much. And actually, people are complaining about that. That he doesn't show up too much in the film. In my opinion, I feel like Godzilla actually showed up enough. Not to feel his presence. When you see his scales in the water. Like his little, like, scales that come out of his back. When you see him go in the water. And, like, see his detail from the water. And the camera shows. And, like, it, him rising. And his tail going everywhere. Hitting things. I thought that was actually really well done. That really showed a dark presence, a scary presence that this thing, and when it comes out, it's going to scare you. It's going to pop, it's going to rise, and you're going to be like, holy crap, that thing is big. It's a thousand times big. It's like stories big. That's how big it is. It's just amazing to see the visual effect team really work on Godzilla and really bring him to life in a way that you couldn't have done in the 1954 original. So I'd like to see that really well done here. Um, one, um, I, I can't really think of flaws too much in the film, and, um, a lot of also people, wait, I also mentioned that God, a lot of people are also complaining that Godzilla is fat. He's fat in some ways. Um, I don't actually think he's actually fat at all. I think he's actually the perfect way. I mean, yes, he hasn't, there's no, like, thousands of monsters coming to Earth eating them. Like, there's no gigantic butterflies or anything like that. But, um, what do you think he's going to be doing? He's going to be, like, swimming the ocean all day? No, he's going to be eating some waste or something like that. Of course, he's going to be eating and a little bit obese, but he's not fat. He's not like he's, like, fat to the point he can't walk. He's, he's like, big. He's a big animal. What, he's going to be skinny to the point of a stick? Because if he is, then, this won't, then that won't be true to Godzilla itself. That won't be true. It'll just be, like, skinny Zilla or something like that, or just some made-up name. And it rob the fans of Godzilla itself. And I don't think Warner Brothers and Legendary Pictures, I don't think they wanted to betray the fans for this long-awaited film to come back. And I think they did a good job, really just overall, Godzilla's presence. And I don't want to spoil too much, but let's just say Godzilla is not... Uh, I can't really say too much, but Godzilla's really... His presence really does make a big point of the film. I mean, what I like about this is that the original, it had a political message in it. And this one, there's no real political message. It's just like, Godzilla's here, he's gonna show up, and that's it. And it's not like he shows up to the last five minutes and it's over. He shows up throughout the entire film. He's present throughout the entire film, like I said. really does, it's really like on a line. He shows up, shows up, rises, and it comes back down, and you won't see him like five minutes, and he shows up again. That's what I think. So, some people saying he only shows up in the last 10 minutes of the film. That's not true. He doesn't show up in the last 10 minutes of the film. He shows up throughout the entire film. So, get it right. Um, and a lot of people are also talking about the ending of this film. Now, the ending of this film is something that you're either going to love or going to hate. In my opinion, I loved it. Because I thought it was supposed to happen, actually. I was actually surprised a little bit by what happens in the ending. Um... I also liked how it really wraps it up, and it really sets up a sequel in the works as well. In case you guys haven't noticed, this film is actually made... It's, it's really cheap to make, actually, for a film like this. $160 million it costs, actually. I think it, it actually made that money back throughout the entire weekend, worldwide. And I, and I believe Godzilla 2 is in the works, but it hasn't been confirmed yet. So, of course, they're going to make a sequel to this next, set it up somehow. And I believe that it was really well done what they did with this film. Um, I believe overall that Godzilla really is a film that's made for the hardcore Godzilla fans. If you really love Godzilla, 
then you really have to see this. If you haven't seen it already, you know, if you haven't seen it already, go watch it. Watch it this weekend. Watch it today, tomorrow. Whenever you get the chance to, just watch Godzilla because it's, it's an experience that I recommend that you see in theaters. In a theater that has great sound and a big screen. And I actually saw it in 3D, and I'm going to talk about 3D for a little while. A 3D, I'm actually a supporter of 3D, to be honest. Um, I don't know why, but I always like the idea of 3D for some reason. And um, just for me, I actually like that the 3D in this film. Yes, it's been converted, but you know what? There's so many films I saw that was converted, like the Avengers. I was converted to 3D, I believe. So I still saw it in 3D. Iron Man 3, I saw it in 3D. Uh, Thor, Dark World, I saw it in 3D as well. So like a lot of the films that were converted to 3D. And I still really enjoyed it because of the atmosphere at times. Like, like for Godzilla, especially the atmosphere. Like, I'm not gonna spo I'm not spoiling anything, but there's a shot in the trailers when the soldiers are actually on a plane. They jump off the plane from high area. They jump from the high tip of the planet, and they're falling down. And then when you had the 3D glasses on, I felt like, in my opinion, you could really like. You're kind of there with the soldiers. You're kind of like there with them. It's not like Medal of Honor or Battlefield or Call of Duty levels aware with them. But I felt like I was there at the scene. Just like watching them in 3D. You know, it's actually kind of cool. I know a lot of people are actually against the idea of 3D. Some people actually don't like 3D overall. But in my opinion, if you want like a 3D of uh, Godzilla, you got it. So there you go for enjoying that. Um, so overall... Godzilla itself is a really great reboot. It's the best Godzilla film since the original, in my opinion. Um, even though I haven't seen the original. Mm. I don't think there's, there's going to be anyone, any other Godzilla film better than this one. Unless the sequel really knocked its socks off. Who knows? Maybe, who knows what may happen in the sequel. What will happen? I don't know. I just really hope that they really stick to the tone. And the director really does not mess up the atmosphere of the film. And they really do kind of stay true to the lore of Godzilla itself. And in my opinion, the only problem I actually really have with the film is... I do like the act, the care, human actors. Like Brian Cranston, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Elizabeth Olsen. Um, but I feel like I wanted a little bit more from their development of characters. I wanted a little bit more. I did like them. I did sometimes care about them. I did worry if they would die or not, but I just wanted something else to kind of pull me in, that kind of like pull, grasp me in. I mean, the film grasped me in straight from the beginning, after the begin opening credits. Uh, I'm not gonna spoil. I don't want to spoil anything for the first after the first credits, but it really does pull you in. You're kind of like, wow, that is amazing what they did there. Just outstanding. Overall, Godzilla, in my opinion, is a recommendation. It's a really good film. I hope it's make it. Uh, I know it's gonna make its budget back in just one weekend, thanks to the full one box office and then this like U.S. box office. Good job out there for actually seeing the film. It's really a must good film to see. I'm glad you guys checked it out. Um, so overall, what would I give Godzilla out of ten? Well, I would give Godzilla out of ten really a nine out of ten. I don't have many problems with it, really. I don't really have any problems at all. I just don't think it's a perfect film, in my opinion. But there's barely perfect films out there, trust me. I really know a good film when I see one. I know a bad film when I see one. And I know a film that's just outstanding, but not perfect, in my opinion. Um, this film really is close. I mean, Legendary Pictures, who, I think this is almost their last, this, this is the second to done last film with Warner Brothers. It just still is going to be the last time Warner Brothers and they're done with them. So who knows what might happen next. I really do think the reason I'm talking about Legendary Pictures is I felt like that they kind of like did the dark tone because of how the Dark Knight really is like setting a dark tone for all these other films like 300 Rise of an Empire, Man of Steel. Like those are really have, they have like a dark, like they're trying to be darker than you're originally supposed to be. And I really don't think they did a good job bringing this film to its darker roots. And I really think that you guys should check it out yourself. Um, overall, check out the film. That's all I gotta say, guys. Um, please like the video, comment below, and subscribe. Also, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. My name on Facebook is Michael Martinez. My name on, fa I'm on Twitter is TheMichaelM1997. It's the name of my YouTube channel. I just stick with that. 
Um, overall, just, I'm tired of talking here, but just check out the film overall. It's a really worth film. If you see it in 3D or not, it's up to you. I really enjoy 3D overall, like I said before. 3D is kind of not a gimmick, in my opinion. Unless it's for the right film. And Godzilla, hell yeah, it's going to be good for something like this. That's why I give it a 9 out of 10 overall. Not just for the 3D, but the entire film experience itself. Um, for more reviews of like films like Amazing Spider-Man 2, Transcendence, Captain America, or any other films out there that I've done in the past, you can check on my channel, the Michael in 1987. Um, that's all I like to say overall. Bye, guys, and have a good day.